Hi, I'm just taking a quick break from trying to get the ESP32 toolchain working again. I've broken something on the PC, so I don't know why it's not building, but hopefully in the next few days we'll be able to finish this aquarium-like project. In the meantime, I'm just taking my mind off it with a different topic. Um, we've got some LEDs in front of us here, and I've got a project coming up to build some new studio lights. And I already went ahead and bought some LEDs with a CRI of 90, but it got me wondering what effect the CRI actually has on the spectrum that's emitted, how it changes the appearance of objects to the human eye, and then also does it actually make any difference for video recording because uh, the CRI is optimised for how well humans can perceive colour based on the light that's been emitted, but the camera has RGB sensors, it doesn't have an eye. So it may be that although I've spent extra money on high CRI LEDs, for video recording it might not make any difference. So what we've got is three LEDs, they are Cree XHP 50s, not the 50.2s, uh, but these are extremely keenly priced on Arrow at the moment. I think the CRI 70 version was only £1.24 plus VAT, and the CRI 90 something like £1.47 I think, which is extremely good value. And it just so happened I managed to get the highest binned LEDs as well. So these ones actually are the highest output. So um, they're not that far behind the XHP 50.2s. So if you were looking for some high power LEDs, you might be able to get yourself a bargain on Arrow at the moment. But what we're going to do today is power these up. We'll have a look at the spectrum with the spectrometer. And then also have a quick look to see if we can see any difference with the camera when the LEDs are pointed at this colour chart. Now taking a closer look at the LEDs, you can see there is some difference in the phosphor between the three LEDs. This one looks quite green, and this one looks quite orangey coloured. They're all 5000 Kelvin LEDs, but it looks like they are using a separate mixture for each CRI level. And the reason being is, and hopefully we'll verify this in a moment, your standard white LED will normally have the blue LED emitter and then there'll be a phosphor that emits somewhere in the sort of yellowy to orange region in the spectrum and that doesn't give a very good CRI because it's missing some of the colours to allow us to render greens and deep reds effectively so these higher CRI LEDs will have some additional phosphors in there to fill in those gaps. What they'll also do at the end of the production line is they will run each LED briefly with a spectrometer and also a means to measure the power output and they'll be binned just to make sure that they are actually meeting the specification. So if they have made some CRI 80 LEDs and it doesn't quite meet that spec then it will get put into the 70 CRI category and they'll also be binned in terms of the power level so effectively the efficiency of the LED. So to measure the spectrum from these LEDs I've got the end piece off some of that lock line tubing from my extractor and we'll place this over one of the LEDs and try and get it all central. And then I've 3D printed a little round disc that mounts onto the end of my fibre for my spectrometer. And this pushes in here quite nicely. And this basically will sit directly over the LED and we should get some quite decent comparative shots of the spectrum from each of these LEDs. So here's the output of the LED with a CRI of 70. We can see we've got our blue peak which is probably coming directly from the blue LED underneath the phosphor and then we've got a phosphor that has a central wavelength of around 560 nanometers, that sort of greeny yellow colour. Here we have the LED with a CRI of 80 and it looks like it's just widened the peak here so we're getting a little bit more green and a little bit more red. And then finally the LED with a CRI of 90 and it really looks like they're bringing in some extra power into these areas here, so a lot more red and a lot more blue and green. Now if you read in the data sheet it will say that these LEDs are also temperature sensitive, so with increasing temperature the efficiency does go down and we don't get so much light output, which is why heat sinking is important. But also um, the spectral output can change with temperature, so what I've done is I've just strapped it to the top of the MHP30 hot plate and I've had to raise up my little rig slightly but we'll place this over the top and then we'll slowly increase the temperature up to 100 degrees C and we'll see if we can see any change in the spectral output. 
So I think what we can see here is that there is a dramatic change in the amount of optical power output from the LED based on increasing temperature. However, I think it's quite difficult to infer whether the spectrum has changed based on temperature from these graphs. Finally, I've got a little rig here to hold an LED in place and we're going to use exactly the same current for each LED and just see how the colours are reproduced. So I'll turn off all the lab lights and then we'll do a comparison between each one. So I think the colour chart is really quite interesting. Areas that we could see being filled in in the spectrum with the higher CRI LEDs was clearly visible in this chart. So colours like yellow that have that sort of orange colour as well as a greener colour, with the lower CRI LEDs this was starting to look a lot more green than yellow. And similar for the peach colour and the teal area that was being filled in. And also this red here uh, these are quite low CRI LEDs that I've got in the lab at the moment, but you can barely see any difference between these two. This one looks really quite different with the high CRI LEDs. And I think it's quite interesting to see that the camera does see the improvement in the spectrum. So I think that's about it for this little investigation. One thing to point out is you do trade off something for the increased optical performance. And I'm not necessarily talking about money, but also in terms of efficiency. So you'll tend to find these LEDs with a CRI of 70 have a much higher lumens per watt figure than these with a CRI of 90. So you often see figures for white LEDs way in excess of 100 lumens per watt. With the CRI 90 LEDs, that tends to not be the case, and we see figures below 100 lumens per watt. And one of my subscribers pointed out a manufacturer of extremely high quality LEDs called UG LEDs, and they have CRIs in excess of 98, but the optical output is nowhere near what we'd see from these LEDs. So we tend to see less than 80 lumens per watt from those LEDs. So something worth pointing out, if you are just after raw light, you probably won't find that with these very high CRI LEDs. So I think I better get back to the aquarium light project and see if I can finish that off. Hopefully you found the video interesting. A big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for allowing these types of videos to happen. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>